thank you so much for being here today, Megan. So the first question, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Tell us about your current position and a bit of your academic background. My name is Megan. I work as a process engineer in training. I currently work for a company called AWC Solutions and we manufacture water treatment plants. Um, I went to UBC for chemical engineering and I graduated in 2018 and I used to be a blogger with engineering stories. That's great. What would a typical day of work for you as a chemical engineer? And what are some of the current projects you're working on? So my typical day is sort of, or generally split up. Half the time I spend it collaboratively in meetings, both with the engineering team and with other disciplines. And the other half of the day, I work on the actual process design of water treatment plants. So there's a number of documents that go into that, including a piping and instrumentation diagram, a process flow diagram, and some calculations as well. Uh, some of the projects that I'm working on right now, we just started doing the design for a dissolved air flotation water treatment plant. And I'm also working on finalizing a design for a tube settler clarifier treatment plant. Sounds very technical and very <laughs> exciting. Um, moving on to the next question. When you were in the grad, what stood out to you about choosing chemical engineering? And what are some of the decision process that you made in pursuing it? So I think like many first years, I really struggled with what I wanted to do. And I found it very difficult in the courses in first year, even though they're supposed to give you this broad baseline of knowing what to go into. Um, but I've always really liked chemistry. And so I think like many other chemical engineers, I chose it because of that, only to find out that there's actually very little chemistry involved in chemical engineering. Um, now that I'm actually in it, working in industry, I found that I really love the fact that process engineering is so about the overall project. You're looking at it from start to finish, not just individual sections like you would in different disciplines like mechanical or instrumentation or controls, something like that. Uh, and so I love just being able to look at it from the, the overview. Sounds good. Moving on, what are three habits or skills necessary for highly successful engineers? I think the first would be creativity. Um, engineering problems all need to have creative solutions. The second is to be able to work collaboratively, uh, both while you're going through school, finishing assignments, trying to figure out problem sets, and then as well once you graduate in order to work in a team setting, both with people of the same discipline and other disciplines. Uh, and then the third one I think would be organization, both trying to manage your course load and everything else. And then when you graduate, just being able to keep all of you know, the numbers and calculations and everything else that you're doing all together and organized and straight. Yeah, those are definitely helpful. Um, moving on, what has been the most valuable or most memorable event that had happened over the course of a career? So last February, I was able to go on a work trip to a water treatment plant in Northern Ontario. And that was my first time being able to have some hands-on field experience. Mm -hmm. And I also got to work with both the client and the township. And that I found to be really important and memorable to transition some of my knowledge from theoretical to practical, as well as being able to work with more people that I don't normally on the day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's exciting. It's definitely exciting to get out of the office sometimes and to like kind of apply your skills in the real yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the challenges in deciding a career path? Did your goals or plans change during your studies or once you had started your career? It's a tough one. Um, all through university, I always thought that I would do something a little bit more on the softer side of engineering. All of my jobs through university were more teaching, camps, outreach, that sort of thing. Um, so I kind of surprised, I think myself, as well as friends and family, that I ended up in a pretty technical role. But I always knew going through, if I didn't end up on the soft side, that I always wanted to work either in water treatment or more on the environmental side of chemical engineering. And I'm still here working in water treatment. Sounds good. So what you're trying to say is that you definitely didn't, did you expect yourself working in this technical field when you were? No, no, I didn't. So now let's talk about your experience as an undergrad student. So what was the most memorable university experiences for you? In my third year, I got to go on a course in the Netherlands during the summer, a summer seminar. And it was all about biking infrastructure and sustainability 
and it was a month long and we biked everywhere and I learned so much both from professionals in cities all over the Netherlands and professors and that by far was my my most memorable university experience. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit more about how you, how you got involved. I believe they're called global seminars. Mm. I didn't want to extend my degree by a semester and do a semester abroad, although I was very tempted. And so this is something I did as a little bit of a compromise. So I still got a little bit of that flavor of studying abroad. Um, but it's actually a course that was run out of UBC Okanagan. So we went with, I think it was about a dozen UBC and UBCO students. Mm -hmm. And it was organized here and we started in Kelowna. And then we went and worked throughout the Netherlands. We've got lots of cool different programs in all sorts of disciplines and areas. That is good to know. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Just keep going. It's hard, but don't quit. There's, uh, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I guess light at the end of the tunnel is maybe a better. <laughs> that is great. Um, just kind of wrap up, what is your favorite part of uh, being an engineer? I love the ring. I, I love the fact that you can identify a Canadian engineer mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. And I've run into some before and just the fact that we have this, this thing, this obligation that we've taken that links us all together. And it's a community of, you know, thousands and thousands of people that all have the same values. Yeah, so it's really sharing that responsibility of being an engineer. Yes. That was a great answer. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this, Megan. Thanks so much for having me.